Okay, everyone. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So it is just me tonight, A Day, the Black Carnivore. And um, I'm really uh, excited to have a chance to catch up with you. So uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm A Day, and I'm uh, otherwise known as a Black Carnivore. And um, I started a, a low carb ketogenic diet in 2015. I went on to lose 80 pounds. And then in 2017, I decided to try the carnivore diet. It worked magnificently for me and um, I decided to keep going with it. So, uh, you know, I started my channel to try to help anybody else who might be interested in eating this way and make sure that, um, you know, it's uh, a viable option for people who are looking to reverse metabolic disease, lose weight, and uh, otherwise, you know, live, get off the diet roller coaster, which, um, you know, so many of us get stuck on. So anyway, that is uh, what I did. So uh, for those of you who are regulars here, hey, welcome back. Give me um, a hi and uh, in the chat, let me know if you can hear me. Um, hey, Melvina, it's great to see you. Um, thanks for coming. So, um, so today I wanted to, so I'm gonna be traveling tomorrow. Uh, as some of you may know, I had a death in the family, so I'm going to the funeral and I'm leaving tom early tomorrow morning. And um, this week has actually been kind of a whirlwind. I was trying to help my cousin and, um, you know, there was just a lot, uh, a lot of things to be done. So uh, I, I got more involved in doing things than I, I thought that I would. And, um, you know, just trying to stay on top of it was definitely, um, definitely a push. And, uh, but I'm going to be traveling tomorrow. And so I thought I would talk about traveling while carnivore and what that looks like and, you know, how to go about doing that. So, um, I'd love to hear from, you know, any of you, if you have been traveling while carnivore, like how you did it, what you did. Um, I think this is probably, um, it's been a long time since I've had to do any kind of traveling, uh, probably, well, probably a couple of years, really. So I'm, you know, kind of interested to see how this all goes. I know that um, I want to stay on plan because I know that I don't feel as good when I am not eating, um, you know, when I'm not eating carnivore. Like if I eat something that's off plan, I'm get definitely going to feel less well. So, uh, so I definitely want to do it. Uh, hey, Jocelyn, welcome. It's good to see you. So, um, you know, I'm just definitely going to try to figure out what, what, uh, what approach to take. Now, what I should have done, but was not, did not organize myself um, enough to do was to make some jerky. So I am going to be doing what I tell you all not to do is, is uh, go to the airport with nothing in hand. Um, you know, maybe I will... Gee, maybe I'll make something and have some uh, sliced, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, at this point, I also don't want to go to the airport and um, eat anything, take off a mask or anything like that. So I think, um, you know, for that reason, it would be safest and ideal for me not to, you know, really not to eat anything until I get to my final destination and can wash my hands and, you know, uh, do do all of that so um let me know if any of you have been traveling oh i see um about bam says um okay traveling recently definitely exposed your weakness with food and carbs yeah so i'd be interested to hear um was that like in the airport or you mean like going out to restaurants and that sort of thing um, you know, the family that I'm going to stay with likes to eat out, um, and is not like a person who cooks at home. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Like, I really prefer not to eat out because it's hard to, it really is hard to control what you're getting. And, um, you know, and you end up spending a lot of money on, uh, you know, maybe not, not ideal food. So I'm really going to have to think about how, you know, how I do that, um, I, yeah. So I think what I'm going to ask um, is that we go to the grocery store and I get some things so I have, you know, at least some basic things that I can eat. Um, but beyond that, I'm going to, you know, just have to be prepared to eat out at a restaurant and just know that I'm going to get um, a steak or a dry hamburger. 
<laughs> and either way, I'm going to pay through the nose for it, and that'll be okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Theophilus Man says, Hi, we arrived back from our uh, vacation today. Carried the slow cooker in the luggage. Oh, wow. Wow. So tell me, Theophilus Man, did you, um, did you drive, or uh, how did you carry a slow cooker in your luggage? Um, checking a bag must be pretty expensive, and it's got to be expensive to carry a slow cooker. So, you know, let me know. Um, about Bam says, feeding my family for a week, I started to snack. I thought I was prepared. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to really be prepared. And especially when everybody's eating this stuff and it feels like, you know, I mean, the way people approach these foods, it feels like they're really not that big a deal. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of having a little and it's okay. But, um, you know, moderation is, is not really, is not enough when you're dealing with some of these foods. Like they're not good in every amount. Every amount is a problem. So, um, I don't know. I, yeah, you just definitely have to be careful about that. Um, let's see. Jocelyn says the first time I ate out while traveling, I was annoyed by waiters who tried to push carbs to my order. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people will definitely, I know they'll definitely look at me strange and, um, you know, and when I say I don't want it, but, uh, you know, that's how it is. Um, they'll definitely think that you're weird. Although I do have to say, I went to a restaurant a couple of weeks ago, um, with, uh, another cousin who came to visit and I asked for, well, there was nothing on the menu that really worked for me. And, uh, they, um, but they did have skirt steak as part of like other meals. So I asked if I could just get the skirt steak grilled and just that. And, you know, after asking me a bunch of questions and I'm just saying just the steak, just the steak, they were like, okay, okay. And, uh, and that's what I got, just the steak. And I was, I was pretty impressed. Um, so when I, I, um, posted it later on Instagram and I, I tagged them and said, you know, wow, I was so impressed that, um, you know, that I got my order just as I had asked for it, even though, you know, even if it came with some odd looks and, uh, the restaurant wrote back and, they, you know, they were like, Hey, to each their own. We just, you know, aim to please whatever you order, you know, we aim to get it. So glad you got what you liked, <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. Um, you know, and I, I hope that every restaurant kind of has that approach. Like it's, you know, it's their job to provide you with the food you want. And if you're, as long as you're not asking for something that is like crazy, like, you know, why not? Why shouldn't they be able to do it without giving you a hard time? Um, let's see. Theophilus man says, uh, you flew with a small size in bubble wrap in checked bag. Um, a 12 inch by a 10 inch. Oh, okay. I get it. So it's a small, a very small slow cooker. Um, okay. That could work. I, you know, I had a George Foreman grill that I, you know, I got it like, I think I got it in high school or it was, you know, my mom had gotten it in high school and I took it with me to college and I took it with me around the world and to all my trips and all the places I've been. And, um, that George Foreman grill worked for like 25 years before it finally died. And, but it was so useful because it was small. It cooked, you know, great. It was really easy. Um, it didn't require, you know, a lot of like special handling and, uh, you know, it was just perfect. So then I, I got another one and, uh, it was terrible. Like, I don't understand, you know, these things were indestructible and they were perfect. And then this one that I got, like, you know, it both, you know, left for food burnt and raw and which I don't know how you do that, but that's what it did. So, uh, it was, that was definitely a disappointment. Um, but something like that would probably be pretty easy. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. I'm going to think about, I'm going to think about how, what I can bring, but, um, I'm pretty sure my, my cousin has some stuff in the kitchen with, for cooking, but, um, yeah, I'm going to have to, you know, really make it my business to, to get some, some cooking done. So, um, yeah, but, uh, definitely, um, let me know if any of you, anyone else has traveled any in the last uh, couple of weeks and, um, and how it has gone for you. 
I, you know, I'm a little, I don't know, I guess I'm a little anxious about it, but uh, it's been, you know, it's been since June since I have had any sweet taste. So, you know, I'm really on a roll and I want to stick with it. Like I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to fall off track. So I'm, I'm really committed to, you know, trying to make this work. Um, so yeah, you'll, next week you're going to be, you're going to be impressed by, you know, how I, how I managed. Um, and so let's see the other thing that I wanted to mention. Oh, um, so the keto hope dealers, that was the interview that, um, I released on Tuesday. I, I don't know how many of you had a chance to look at it, but, um, I, you know, that was, it was a really, really interesting interview. And, um, I, you know, I loved having an opportunity to talk to them. Um, not only have they had spectacular success on, uh, a ketogenic diet and, um, you know, they've lost combined 200 pounds, which is pretty impressive. Um, but they went on to start a magazine, which I thought was a, just a really, um, creative and interesting approach to, uh, disseminating information and trying to support and help others in their, um, you know, in their weight loss journeys. So, uh, I did put the information in the, um, description, uh, on the YouTube video that I made, uh, and it's, it's surely in wherever you listen to podcasts, but definitely, um, you know, check out their, uh, their website and, uh, you can go ahead and order the magazine. They're now doing it in print, which is awesome. So you can either get a digital copy or you can um, have one mailed to you. And uh, I think that is a really, you know, really great thing to do. Um, you know, magazines kind of seem retro, but um, it's, I don't know, it's more comfortable for me anyway to read to read like a piece of paper. You know, I get so distracted when I'm trying to do this stuff on my phone. So yeah. So, um, the other thing I wanted to share, let's see, uh, well, my hair looks different. I don't know if anybody notices that. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I decided to cut my hair and it was sort of a last minute thing. I was just, um, you know, going to do a little trim and then, uh, you know, just more and more kept coming off and, um, and th this is where I ended up. So, um, yeah, I'm going to look, uh, you know, it looks quite a bit different and, uh, you know, I'll take some new pictures to put up on the website so people will know who I am. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I decided to go ahead and do it. And, um, it's been a while since I've changed my hair significantly. So, um, you know, it was definitely time to, you know, to do something new and do something different. Um, just, you know, I don't know. I, I feel, I, I must be feeling like everybody else, I just kind of ready for a change. You know, things just need to get shaken up a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, Jocelyn, you listened to the interview today. Um, yeah, it's definitely an inspiring story, inspiring story. Um, and yay. I'm so glad you guys like my hair. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, large picture. I'm glad you like the hair. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I feel a little bit more like I have a hairstyle instead of just a lot of hair that's not doing anything special. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, and then, uh, there were, oh, uh, so yeah, sorry. I had a list of things that I wanted to touch on today, but, um, the other one is, uh, to uh, talk to you about the, uh, carnivore reset program. So, uh, that has gone really well. I, you know, I'm starting another session in the first week of May and I encourage you all to check it out and, uh, think about considering it for yourself. Um, or, you know, or if you're like just trying to get yourself back started, um, uh, you know, in ketosis and, uh, you know, sort of clean up your act, this is a great way to do an elimination diet to reset your, your taste buds so you can get off the sweet stuff, um, and to, uh, you know, and to sort of jumpstart your program. Um, and also just get started on carnivore. You know, I find a lot of times people really, um, 
you know, have some trouble in the beginning. And there are just small tweaks that could be done that really make it easy. But, um, but they, you know, you kind of have to know what these things are. Um, I've done, you know, a lot of videos, me and Arian have done a lot of videos and we try to talk about, um, you know, the various like pitfalls and challenges and struggles that we had in the beginning that we hear other people have, but, um, but still, you know, it's a lot. It's, we're, we're talking about doing something that is very, very different from how, you know, we've been instructed all of our lives to eat. And so it, um, it takes, you know, it really takes having someone who can kind of step in on a regular basis, a daily basis, really look at what you're eating and being able to say, okay, you know, this is good, or this is a problem, or this is going to, you know, trip you up. So, uh, you know, so that's what, uh, the carnivore reset program does. It's basically 30 days of daily, you know, coaching and interaction. And, um, you know, you have an opportunity, you know, it's pretty strict, but it gives you an opportunity to really bring down your inflammation to an all time low so that, um, you have an opportunity to see how amazing you can feel. And I, I know I talk about this a lot. I talk about how amazing, um, I, you know, started to feel on carnivore and, um, you know, when I went from the standard American diet and finally got into ketosis and, and finally the moment, like, I feel like you know, it was almost a moment when I got fat adapted where it was kind of like all of a sudden, you know, I just felt great. And, you know, and it was very, you know, it was kind of stark to me, but I, I remember the first time, um, I think it was about six weeks in, I thought, man, I haven't thought about chocolate in a couple of days. And that was, you know, pretty stunning for me. But so that was for me, the moment I knew that at that point I was sort of becoming fat adapted. But, um, you know, I went from feeling, you know, terrible on the standard American diet and feeling amazing on keto. And so I kind of thought, you know, this is it. Like I've hit the pinnacle of how great I can feel. And this is great, you know, and I feel great. And then going on carnivore, um, once I got through like, you know, sort of the initial stuff and taking uh, out dairy, then I hit a new pinnacle, a new peak of amazingness that, um, you know, just bore no relation to how I was feeling on keto. Um, it was, uh, you know, there was as much difference between how I felt, um, on keto and the standard American diet as how I feel on carnivore versus on keto. So, um, it was, you know, it was really transformative for me. And I, you know, most people just don't believe th that you're going to feel that great on carnivore. Cause it takes a while to, you know, kind of get used to it, let your body get some healing under its belt and get all the way, you know, get a little bit further along the way. And most people, you know, people have a hard time kind of sticking with it and, and maybe also making mistakes along the way that make you feel, um, you know, not as good. So what I, you know, really want to try to do is like help people get to that point where they feel amazing. So, you know, it's up to you to then decide once you have felt that feeling, whether you want to continue it or not, um, and how you want to, you know, do your carnivore journey. But I do want people to at least have a taste of that feeling and then, you know, and then be able to make a decision about what they're going to do. So, uh, so that's kind of the point of the, you know, the reset program. And, um, you know, so I'm encouraging anybody, if you know anybody who think you think might benefit from it, um, definitely, you know, let them know we're going to start another session in the beginning of May and I would, um, you know, love to work with them. So <laughs> that's the plan. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I really enjoyed doing it. It has, uh, it's really been a pleasure to see how well people do. And, um, I'd love for everybody who's here in the, uh, you know, in the, um, in the chat box to, you know, write about what were, what were some of the things that you, uh, benefited from, you know, getting started on carnivore? How did you improve? Um, I talk about it you know, I talk about it, but I don't think, you know, I don't really talk about all the different things. Um, you know, I try to go through with people, um, and, uh, and, you know, kind of cover from the top of the body, from the top of your head, all the way down to your feet, like all of the different parts in your body where changes are happening so that you can really be aware of how you're improving. But, um, I, you know, I don't always talk about that, but I do kind of do a scan through my body all the time, you know, paying attention to how I'm feeling and, um, and trying to stay in tune with it. Um, 
Oh, large fixture. Thank you. Yes. Hit the like button. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I do love the support and, um, you know, I want to keep providing like as much, um, you know, free content as I can that can, you know, help to educate and motivate people. And so when you provide support like that, it's super, super helpful. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that large picture. Um, and uh, let's see, Melvina Johnson says knee pain greatly redu reduced. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's like, that's such a huge one. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely had that experience too. I used to have to, you know, I would take the subway to work and everything and going up and down the stairs was just a nightmare. And there were times when I felt like I had to walk down the stairs backwards because, you know, that puts less pressure on your knees and, you know, that's how much pain I was in. So it was definitely, um, you know, definitely a problem, definitely a big deal. Uh, you know, but for me, probably the biggest changes that happened were, um, you know, totally resolving my asthma and, uh, you know, and totally resolving my allergies and being able to live with a dog. Like those were massive changes for me. Um, let's see, Jocelyn had improved mood, less inflammation and less joint pain. Yeah. Those are like the trifecta that, that usually happens with um, a carnivore diet. And um, the mood thing too is, is what is, is very surprising for people. Um, I think absolutely everyone has um, some general improvement in mental health. Um, and some people have, you know, really significant improvement in that area, but most people just don't even seem to think about that as being something that, um, you know, that they're expecting to have. Let's see. Vanessa says less back pain and less tired when waking up in the morning. Yeah. So, um, better quality sleep and, um, you know, generally, yeah, less pain in, in lots of different places. Um, so that's really common. I would definitely say that I, I don't need as much sleep and it's, you know, that's sort of surprising. Um, uh, I feel like I used to really just need a lot of sleep to get to the point where I felt rested. Um, but I, you know, I really don't have that anymore. Let's see. Miss Tady says better quality of sleep. I sleep the same amount of time as before, but now I wake up feeling more refreshed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. And, you know, it's surprising to me. I mean, I guess, you know, in the world today, it shouldn't be surprising, but, you know, so many people really have disordered sleeping and, um, and really struggle with it. So, um, I, you know, it's, it's nice how carnivore really can help with uh, problems of insomnia and, um, you know, the snoring, the, um, sleep apnea can, it can improve quite a bit as well. So, uh, that's something to really, you know, to look forward to. And it's a good reason to try, <laughs> try eating this way. Um, I've definitely seen people talk about, um, you know, having deeper, more restful sleep, even, um, you know, and, and even finding some improvement in the quality of their sleep, even, um, while using, well, especially while using, uh, you know, one of the, like a CPAP machine. And that's a, sort of an interesting thing because there you really are able to judge the quality of your sleep because it's all being recorded. And, um, you know, there's very specific measurements around it. So you, you kind of do know how your sleep is. And, um, and so you're, uh, it's, so it's interesting to, to see people on those machines and, and see them being able to quantify their improvement. So that's awesome. Uh, any other benefits that you see, um, or what would you like to see? What are you still working on? Um, I know for me, um, I, you know, so eczema is still something that I struggle with, but I'm starting to see more patterns and I, I am seeing, um, you know, the places where I, I struggle and, uh, you know, and I'm seeing flare ups when I do certain things. So like, um, you know, when I add certain spices, I, I do see a flare up. So I think, you know, that I specifically have, you know, a lot of sensitivity to, uh, to plants. And so I have to be very careful. Uh, but I don't know that, you know, everyone else necessarily has to be. And, um, 
I, you know, but I, I think otherwise I also have to be careful about like non-food things, you know, making sure there's not like perfumes in, in the things that I'm using and the stuff that I'm putting on my skin is not a problem. So that's something that other people, um, you know, if you're having skin things, um, you know, some, a lot of it is the food, but there may be other external things that you kind of have to, uh, to check on as well. But, um, I'm glad to be off the steroid creams and, you know, really being able to control things much more, um, effectively than that. Uh, yeah. So let me know if you have any questions for me. I'm not going to go on too long tonight, but um, I would love to, you know, keep having a little bit of conversation with you. I'm enjoying this. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear more about what you're, uh, you know, what you're thinking and what's going on with you all this week. Um, let's see, Jocelyn, you're still working on GERD. Yeah. So that, you know, that may take a little more time and it may take kind of figuring out and tweaking what, um, what needs to work right for you. And I, I think that that's also something that's really important. A lot of times we want to, I mean, I know that I would love it if, you know, a doctor could, you know, do all the tests and then come back and say, okay, well, according to this, this, and this, you should do, you know, X, Y, Z, eat this, that, and the other, and you should do all of these things and everything's going to be perfect. And unfortunately, you know, nobody really can give you those kinds of answers. You know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, testing and trial and error. Um, and, and, you know, and tweaking things so that they're just right for you. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what you have to do. So, you know, you start out with the general, um, with the general instruction to eat meat, salt, fat, and water, and, um, you know, and everything will be fine, but, um, it's not, you know, it's not quite that simple. You kind of have to, um, you have to experiment with your own body. And that's what I, and I like to help people like on a one-on-one -on -one basis, kind of help you figure out how to target and how to, um, try things and, uh, what things might work and what, what might not. So, um, yeah. So with GERD, you know, that's one of those things where you're, you know, it's just going to be a constant, um, you know, uh, trial and error. Let's see. Vanessa says, I'm still working on resolving headaches. So, so far it's a lot less throbbing, but not all the way resolved. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's got to, um, that's going to be hard. Headaches really are tough. Um, so, you know, that might, that might be an electrolyte issue or you might have, you know, something else more specific going on. Do you feel like you're staying on top of your electrolytes or drinking too much water? Um, that's something to think about. And Jocelyn says, I know spices pay, play a part, so I need to start eliminating some. Uh-huh. Yeah, Jocelyn. So spices, um, yeah, could definitely be a part of the GERD. It might be worth it for you to go all the way, get really strict, like, uh, you know, like on the program and then, um, you know, start carefully, you know, experimenting and adding back very slowly and see what happens. Um, oh, mommy does uh, keto. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I very much appreciate it. Um, I was looking for something different and, um, you know, more stylish. So thanks. Um, but, uh, yeah, so definitely, um, let me know if there are other things that you are working on or questions that you might have for me. I, uh, am really excited about, um, some of the upcoming interviews that I'm going to be releasing. I've had some really great, um, inspiring conversations with people who, uh, you know, have really done amazing things on the carnivore diet. Um, I think it's really helpful to hear those kinds of stories. And, you know, what's been exciting for me as is as I get on to Clubhouse and I, I get out there and I start talking to people, you know, more and more people have like started to hear about, um, you know, about the carnivore diet and have wanted to, you know, have become, um, 
you know, after have, hearing me talk, you know, kind of consider it and instead of thinking, oh, that's just crazy and something I can't do, but are actually starting to consider it and think about how they might do something like this. And, um, and that's really been exciting for me to, you know, to hear that, um, it's starting to get out there and people are starting to consider it and, um, and starting to have really great success. So if you haven't come to one of the clubhouse rooms, I, I definitely encourage you to do it. It's really interesting. And there are, you know, there's, it's a different crowd of people, but you know, I've had people kind of drop in who say, okay, you know, I decided to try this and two weeks ago I tried it and, um, you know, it's amazing and this is happening and I feel great and, um, really loving it. So, uh, I, I, um, I, that really always makes me very happy because it's, it's really, you know, it's great to see people just get off of, you know, get off the diet track. Uh, I've said this before, but there are, you know, we've put so much energy into, um, trying to eat in a way that we think is healthy, but is actually really counterintuitive and, um, and, you know, and actually harming our health. And so, we, you know, we, we, we spend so much energy and time doing that and, and not getting anywhere or getting, you know, gaining more weight and, and having our uh, metabolic disease get worse. And so, uh, you know, I love to see when people are able to actually have the right information, put the effort in and be rewarded, have that effort rewarded and, um, and, and, you know, greatly. So, um, you know, so it really makes me happy when I see people try the carnivore diet and be stunned by how amazing they feel. So, um, yeah, definitely, um, enjoying getting the word out there and, you know, talking to different sets of people. Um, uh, Mr. Bogglesworth, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, again, the support is so helpful so I can keep doing this and, um, make sure to keep providing, uh, you know, the, the support and education that, um, that, uh, I so enjoy, you know, giving and doing. And, um, I, you know, and I, I really do encourage you all to, to get on clubhouse as quickly as you can. I think they actually, um, are starting to let, uh, Android people come on. So hopefully soon everyone will be able to get on, but, uh, yeah, I, it, the conversations are really amazing. Um, and large picture just asked about, uh, I think this is about Vanessa's headaches. Um, if you're still drinking caffeine. Um, yeah, caffeine can kind of mess you up and do, do some stuff with your, with headaches and, uh, and also drive up anxiety. It's actually pretty surprising what, um, how much it can contribute to anxiety. I will say that, um, you know, my approach is, is very strict in the beginning of the carnivore reset program and, uh, you know, and it does not include coffee. And so a lot of people, um, you know, sort of balk at that. But at the end of the day, um, it actually does seem to make a significant difference in terms of, you know, the healing and the improvements in mental health and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just one month, one month, no coffee. It's okay. It's doable. It's, um, it'll be fine. <laughs> so anyway, Anyone, anybody else have any questions for me? I would love to, um, stick around and chat for a little bit more before we wrap up. Um, but, uh, I, <laughs> I've really been enjoying getting a chance to talk to you, but I'm not used to talking for, um, an hour straight by myself. <laughs> This is definitely new for me. Um, I'm enjoying it though. And, um, Arian will be back next week. We're going to do off and on, um, you know, weekly off and on, but, um, it's, uh, you know, it's been fun doing this too. Um, Jocelyn says, wow, no coffee. Yeah, I know. I know it is hard. Um, it's, uh, definitely, you know, I, coffee is just one of those things. It's like, you know, wormed its way into our heart that it's just, it seems like it's no problem at all, but you know, sometimes it, it kind of is a problem. Um, let's see. Vanessa says, yes, I did quit two and a half months, but then I restarted drinking coffee. I started tapering it down again, but I know I do need to quit again. 
Yeah, Vanessa. Well, so Vanessa, when you were off of it for two and a half months, did you notice a difference in your headaches or, um, or no? Because uh, if you didn't notice a difference, then, uh, you know, maybe it's not really um, a big, di big deal. Hey, Esther, welcome. So glad that you made it. It's been a while since I've seen you. Um, and hey, Mr. Bogglesworth. Um, so are you asking about the carnivore reset um, or just general coaching with me? Because you can do coaching with me anytime, but the, the reset program, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do one session a month um, or, you know, one, you know, whole, I'm going to do it monthly, um, but not, you can't start at any point in the month. So at the beginning of, uh, and the beginning of May is when I'm going to do the next, um, begin the next session. So, um, yeah, definitely let me know if you're interested. You can set a, um, uh, like a 15 minute, um, free consultation and, uh, we can talk about whether it works for you. So let me know. Um, uh, okay. So Esther, tell me how you're doing. It's been a while since I've seen you and I'm wondering how it's all going. Uh, I don't dip into the Facebook group as often as I, as I want to. Um, but, uh, you know, it's definitely a lively group and I know people are really coming along. I'm been so impressed by how many people are just, you know, dropping weight and looking great and getting healthier and, um, you know, really embracing the carnivore lifestyle. So that really makes me happy to see. And, uh, I know Esther, you're, you're usually pretty active in the Facebook group. So, um, so let, yeah, let me know in the chat, how you doing? Um, <laughs> And, um, and then, uh, the other thing that is coming, oh man, oh, there were two things I wanted to say. Um, well, my birthday is coming up in June and I was trying to think about what to do. Um, so I'm definitely going to have some kind of carnivore celebration. Hopefully I will do, I'd like to do something digital so I can, uh, share a little bit of that with, um, you know, with all of you. And, uh, and then also, uh, Tracy Simpson reached out and asked me to, um, you know, to host a, uh, start doing a black carnivore dance party. So I don't, you know, I don't know if that would be of something that's of interest to you all, but, um, let me know in the chat. We talked about music in the last, uh, live stream. And I think, uh, you know, that kind of, kind of got people galvanized and Tracy was asking about, you know, doing something like that on a zoom. So it wouldn't be live, you know, you'd have to, um, RSVP, but that might be really fun. And as I'm learning how to, uh, dance to house music, I, you know, hopefully will you know, be able to do a little better and, uh, you know, be able to share some of my favorite songs with you all and, uh, you know, dance and so on. Okay. Vanessa says, I did not notice uh, a difference, but I probably should have given it a full three months or longer. Hopefully I can give it up again soon. Um, yeah, I, you know, that might be something to experiment with and, uh, you know, and kind of pay attention to, um, and, you know, and also what, el you know, what else you're having. Um, if you're trying to get off of it and don't want to cause headaches, um, <laughs> I would recommend trying L-tyrosine that really helps to take away the caffeine headache and, uh, you know, allow you to get off the caffeine. And then, you know, within a few days you can stop taking the L-tyrosine, but it, it just gives you a little buffer there and keeps you from having the, those terrible headaches. Um, yeah. And then Esther says, things are well, got my second shot and things were not as difficult as I had heard. I've checked in and, uh, viewed your videos. Great job, A day. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad that you're doing well and that, uh, you know, you didn't, uh, have any, um, you know, any problems with the shot. Yeah. I've definitely, you know, heard about, uh, some people really struggling. So, um, I'm glad that you did well. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to make sure I keep the videos, um, coming and, uh, and that there's, you know, good information. And in fact, I just, um, I went through the, uh, the video that I did with the carnivore cardiologist because I felt like, you know, there really is a lot of great information in there, but you know, it's a long interview and not everybody wants to watch the whole thing. So I kind of pulled out clips where, um, you know, he's just answering questions in, uh, you know, a really succinct and very clear way. And, uh, you know, so I started pulling this out and I'm going to start, um, 
uh, republishing those next week. So, uh, or maybe this weekend. So, uh, you know, hopefully that will help. And I, you know, and I encourage you to share them because, uh, you know, these are the questions that I asked were all the kinds of questions that, you know, we all have and, uh, and all the kind of questions that our families ask, like, when they say, wait, you're only going to eat meat? Well, what about this? And um, so I got him to answer all of those what about this questions. And, uh, and you know, he did it very clearly and, and um, in a way that I think anybody can understand. So uh, you'll have very good ammunition to, to share with people when they start asking you all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, Tracy A. Hey, glad to see you're here. So awesome. And large picture says, I hate to admit it, but I can take a bit, I can take a bit longer than two to three months. Caffeine is a beast. Um, it's a neurotoxin. It does some damage. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, that's fair. Uh, I definitely noticed the difference. I, I noticed an improvement right away from not having caffeine, but, um, you know, the, the improvements that I noticed were around like a feeling of anxiety. And, um, you know, I guess I feel more at peace when not drinking coffee. Um, and I also notice improved sleep. I do think that the caffeine, even if it's just in the morning, it, it does, it changes the way I sleep and I don't, uh, sleep as well. So, um, you know, so I don't know. But headaches is, you know, something specific. So I'm not sure um, if, you know, that's where you would see, uh, you know, where you'd see much and where you would see the improvement. Uh, but yeah, definitely think about doing that. Um, so are there any other questions from, from anybody? Um, let's see. Uh, I, I got another box of carnivore crisps. I wonder how many of you guys are eating those. Um, do you like them or what, what are your favorite flavors? I think, uh, they're, they're really tasty and, um, definitely kind of addictive and, um, they, you know, I, it's helpful to have on hand for an emergency, but I find it's easy enough to kind of start dipping into them for fun and end up eating them as a meal. So let me know if you guys are doing that. I, when I, at my local supermarket had a uh, liver on sale for really cheap. And so I ended up buying 10 pounds and the butcher who was there, um, he, I asked him to slice it really thin for me. So he did. And so it made it really easy to actually dehydrate it without having to cut it myself or do anything. Um, so I've been doing that for my dog for, for quite some time. And, um, I've started to eat them from time to time myself and, um, you know, it's, it's not so bad. I don't know. So maybe tomorrow I'll take some of that with me. I'm not loving it, but it, it would make a good, it would be a, like a good enough thing to eat along the way, um, for an emergency. So let's see. Esther says I converted to decaf coffee about two months ago. I missed the carnivore crisps. Um, where do you purchase them from? Um, you can go to the website, uh, the carnivore Chris, and if you use my code black carnivore, you get 10% off your first order. So definitely, you know, think about doing that. Um, and, uh, I know, oh, Delisa loves them. She has, uh, the ribeye and the brisket are her favorite flavors. The brisket is definitely my favorite flavor, hands down without question. Um, the ribeye is okay, but the brisket is the bomb. Um, and large picture says, uh, no worries. I'm, I'm a group of people who have gotten off coffee. Facebook page is quitting caffeine. People have all sorts of issues. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So if you're looking for support around getting off of coffee, join the Facebook group quitting caffeine. And, uh, that might be, you know, that might be helpful. I, you know, I, I, I do really think that, um, caffeine has a bigger effects than we, we give it credit for, but you know, that's true of everything. Like, you know, we've been taught like sugar's no problem, vegetable oils, you know, it's, it's healthy food instead of like non edible, you know, waste products from creating, <laughs> um, from creating cotton or whatever. Um, that's, that's what got us Crisco. 
uh, and uh, we, you know, we think that w we've allowed ourselves to, um, you know, to be taught and to believe that all of these things that are not edible are foods and that, and they're actually what's making us sick. So, um, yeah, caffeine is just, you know, coffee is just another one of them. But, uh, you know, it was interesting when I was um, rewatching the interview with the carnivore cardiologist, he was um, actually suggesting that uh, it's the vegetable oils that are most damaging to the body. And um, without them, we may have been able to handle more sugar, but um, with them, we just can't. And, you know, that actually kind of makes a lot of sense. I've definitely, you know, heard other people say that. And I know, you know, for me, like I have a much bigger reaction. Like if I eat um, French fries that have been, you know, deep fried, presumably in soybean oil, I have a way bigger inflammatory response than if I like eat a Jolly Rancher. Um, so the sugar is not good by any means. And I'm not saying, you know, have any sugar, but, um, in terms of like my body's physical response, it is, um, m much bigger and more dramatic with the, um, with the French fries than it is with, um, something that's purely sugar. But if you're eating like a donut or a piece of cake, you know, that's a combination of all of them. So it's hard to tell, you know, whether, whether it's the sugar or the vegetable oil, um, so, you know, that's definitely something to, to consider as you're, um, you know, as you're going along in your carnivore journey. So, <laughs> um, so everybody I have, uh, let's see, Jocelyn says, I've certainly eaten pork rinds for a meal. Yeah. Well, you know, pork rinds dipped in like pate is, I mean, that is a meal. Like that's, you know, a perfectly acceptable, healthy meal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, pork rind is just, uh, the skin and, you know, liver is, is liver. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel like you're doing something completely wrong. Um, I know that I do better without pork. So for me, that's not going to work, but you guys, I don't know if you saw my, my post the other day. Um, I decided to, uh, I have some beef fat, the beef fat trimmings that I had gotten from white, white oak pastures. And, uh, I decided to try to render them in the, in the instant pot and, um, and then, fry up the, uh, the remnants that were in, still inside that didn't render into liquid. And that was such a much better way of doing it. And so the, the beef fat, I mean, it was like, um, you know, my idea of heaven, well, when I was growing up, you know, is, you know, when you would get like the bucket of the Colonel's chicken and at the bottom, there'd be like pieces of the fried chicken or the skin that had, you know, um, cracked off or whatever, broken off and had fallen to the bottom. And so there's no chicken in there. It's just like either the batter or the skin and the skin and the batter. And that's what, um, that was the part that I loved. I mean, that was just hands down the best part. And so when I made the, the, uh, fried up the beef fat trimmings and they were crispy, like that's exactly what they taste like. So light and airy and crispy. And, um, you know, there's no, um, you know, substance or thickness inside. It's just all, you know, you just bite into it and it crunches and just immediately it melts in your mouth. So, uh, that was really amazing. So that was far better than any of my efforts to just, um, you know, fry them up in the, um, in the frying pan, uh, without having, you know, cooked them first. So I can I highly recommend uh, if you, you know, saw my, uh, post, I would highly recommend trying to do it that way first and then, uh, and then frying it. Um, the only downside is I cooked all those stuff and of course I'm eating it <laughs> far faster than I would otherwise. So, uh, you know, so it, it's, I'm running, you know, I'll be running out of them pretty soon, but, um, yeah. But, you know, there you go. It's uh, something to have. But that, if I, you know, and if I were dipping that into pate, like, I would say, yeah, that's dinner. I have no problem with calling that dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Jocelyn, I'm, I'm all, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, Jocelyn, it definitely looked fr like fried chicken. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought you all would think that I had, like, 
either fried some chicken or made some, you know, homemade kind of chicken McNugget things. But yeah, it absolutely looked like fried chicken and um, it was the best. Definitely the best. I had heard people say that they were would make those crispy bits while they were making it, make, did rendering the tallow in the Instant Pot. And I couldn't figure out how that would happen. Like I, I ran it through the Instant Pot twice and it didn't, you know, they didn't get crispy. So I was like, uh, I don't know what, how this is supposed to work or if I should just, you know, leave it cooking uncovered, you know, or like in the cooking, in the, um, crock pot, like form, um, format, you know, so I, I don't know. I really wasn't sure how that was supposed to happen. So I just took them out and I put them in the frying pan and, and continue to cook them that way. But it, it cooked pretty, pretty quickly. And, um, you know, it was pretty easy. It was not, you know, it wasn't a long process. So, uh, yeah, that was definitely worth it though. Oh my God. <laughs> so I can highly recommend it. Um, let's see. Esther says, A day, your skin is glowing. Do you still use the lard or is it just eating the meat? Um, so I use tallow, um, for my lotion and yeah, on my skin. So yes, I, I still do that. Um, and I have a bunch of tallow, which I am still meaning to like make into soap. But, um, thus far I've been buying, a tallow soap that is just tallow, no, no scents, nothing else in it. And, uh, I'm actually really loving it. It's, um, working very well for me. So I think that, uh, that's pretty important for me to continue to do. Um, so I do need to make my own soap cause I have uh, now like a ton of tallow. Like I can't keep up with, um, all the, the tallow that I have. So, uh, so I think I will start doing that, but, um, it, thank you. Uh, I definitely think the carnivore diet is a big part of skin health. And uh, so thank you. And let's see, large picture says, I think the common denominator is plant. Sugar is a plant. Caffeine comes from a plant as most drugs. We definitely need to take a closer look at plants in general. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Um, I, you know, I, that's, you know, the way I kind of try to explain why a carnivore diet is a, a good diet for people is that, you know, one, it's a ketogenic diet and it, you know, there's lots of studies have shown that a ketogenic diet is really useful and helpful in terms of reversing metabolic disease and in terms of, um, you know, helping with, uh, you know, weight loss and, and preventing, um, you know, diabetes, stroke and heart disease and cancer and so on. So, you know, for those reasons, it's great. But then there's this other portion that is, you know, sort of separate from the ketogenic thing. And it has to do with, um, you know, the inflammatory response that our bodies have to certain foods. And I, you know, and I, I feel like I have a hard time with it. I mean, for people who really have struggled with inflammation, can't get it under control and are kind of at their wits end, they're more likely to listen and be open to the message that, um, there are other things that be could be causing that inflammation. But, um, you know, but I find other people are just, um, you know, really not willing or ready to hear that and not believing that vegetables could contribute to any of their problems. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't fight with it. I don't fight it. If people don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. But it's, um, it's pretty surprising to me how big an impact even a small amount of uh, plant material can have. And, um, you know, I would not have thought that spices were a big deal. And many of you saw that, like, I... Um, you know, I used to make my, you know, ribeye chunks or chuck chunks that I cooked in the air fryer using, you know, like some fresh rosemary. Like, I love the smell of rosemary. It's great, you know? And uh, I, I couldn't believe that even that was, you know, contributing to, um, you know, some of my skin problems. So I, I have to accept that, yeah, plants are a problem. <laughs> they are a problem and, um, you can achieve better, um, better improvements in your health than you might imagine just by taking out the plants. 
And in the beginning, you know, and before I went carnivore, um, so this, the summer before, uh, the summer of 2017, I was running for uh, city council in my local neighborhood. So uh, I don't know if you all knew this, but yes, I was in, um, I worked in uh, city government for uh, 10 years and I was, um, and I ultimately ran for city council. That was something I had always wanted to do. And I, you know, it's important to me to serve my community and to, um, you know, represent, uh, you know, be a good representative and a good leader. And um, in any event, you know, it was a really challenging um, campaign. Uh, I was, uh, well, I was running against an incumbent, um, the mayor and the speaker of the city council, and a whole lot of people were coming out to support her. And so um, I had a lot of people actively working against me and a lot of people were actively working for me. So, um, but it was a, you know, very contentious race. But um, I... It probably ate more perfectly than ever in my life because I knew like I couldn't afford to not feel good like it would take me out for hours or days if I ate like you know cake or something like that so I even though I wanted to eat emotionally like I just couldn't do it I like didn't have the time for it um, so I didn't I didn't do it um, but, uh, I was nearly carnivore, but not actually, you know, I began the summer kind of, um, I would make my favorite meal, which was like, uh, uh ground beef cooked with, um, Rayo spaghetti sauce, you know, kind of like a sloppy Joe essentially. Uh, so I would make that and, um, instead of putting it on top of pasta or on top of like cauliflower rice, I might, you know, I was, I would start out by putting it on top of broccoli, but then you know, soon after the broccoli kind of disappeared and I would just make that and I would just eat a bowl of that. And, uh, you know, and I loved it. That was like my favorite thing. And I ate that throughout the summer. That was like my campaign meal. And, um, I ate it, uh, pretty much every day. And, um, but I, you know, you would think that it, you know, just like, I wasn't eating that many vegetables. It was really, you know, a, a half a cup, a cup of, of tomato puree, whatever. Um, but it, you know, it was still significant enough to, uh, you know, to not have my, you know, health under control. So my asthma was, it was not great that summer and it was getting worse and worse. And so by, um, January of 2018, it was like absolute worst it had ever been. And like the beginning of that month, I had, um, ended up going to urgent care twice, um, because I, I couldn't breathe and, uh, you know, and it was pretty bad. And so, um, I finally, you know, finally had to, uh, accept, you know, that, that I had to make some significant changes. And that's when I started thinking about, you know, the dairy, but I don't think I started, I don't think it was until like. February or March that I finally decided to take the dairy out. But wow, what a difference. What a difference that made. I mean, just very quickly, it made um, a pretty miraculous difference. So I, you know, I encourage you to definitely give it a try. You have to, gotta, you know, you gotta experiment and see. And it might be, it might really be um, more impactful than you imagine. Okay, so we have had a uh, really good conversation here. So I think I'm going to bring this to a close. But thank you all for being here. I really enjoy talking to you. And wow, there's uh, quite a lot of you here. So um, actually, if you could all hit the like button um, and subscribe and uh, hit the little bell icon so you can get notification every time I go live, I would really appreciate it. Um, I had a great time talking tonight. Uh, I will be traveling tomorrow and, uh, I will definitely, um, keep you updated on my Instagram channel about, you know, how the travels go, what I'm getting a chance to eat and, uh, you know, making sure that I stay on plan. Um, you know, most important thing, like it's, you know, it's going to be a tough weekend. It's, you know, it's family and all of that. So it's uh, definitely going to be tough. So I, it is really important that I stay um, emotionally stable. And I know that I will only be emotionally stable if I am in ketosis and not eating <laughs> junk food. So um, I, you know, I'm keeping that at the forefront of my mind as to why I'm going to stay on plan. And, um, 
you know, and I think that's a helpful way to look at it. And I hope, um, you know, as you all kind of work through um, your challenges with eating this way, that, you know, you kind of keep that in the, keep that why in the forefront of your mind. And, um, you know, it's interesting, my why has changed over, over the years as well. But, um, you know, that feeling, feeling good and being able to um, know that I'm able to comfort and support myself is really important. And, um, and now that I, it's so clear to me that eating poorly is the opposite of good self care. Like I just don't desire to do it. So I, I hope I don't find myself in a situation where I feel like there's nothing else, but I can also know that, you know, I can go days without eating and it's not a problem. So um, I, you know, I can hold on until there is appropriate food and, um, you know, I don't have to give in. I won't give in. So, but I'll keep you all updated on how it goes and, um, hopefully it will go well. Um, Jocelyn, thank you. I will travel well. And, uh, Vanessa, thanks for being here. All right, everybody. So I will see you all next week. I had a great time and, uh, have a great one. All right.